guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. You know, last weekend I was out at the quarantine cruise and every once in a while we see cars from there where it's like, we gotta shoot it. Somebody walks me over, introduces me to Brian, who you'll meet later and says, you gotta check out his square body. So now cut to this morning, we're shooting it and Brian is here, but so is Scott. And we're gonna do the interview with you because you're the one that actually built this truck, right? Yeah. But you're a painting contractor and this is really a hobby thing for you, yeah? Yeah, you know, back in the day I, I first got into off-road and I wanted arms and all kinds of stuff done to it and I took yeah. it in and not only did it take a long time but it cost so much money that I was like, oh, I'm just not into that. I gotta figure out how to do this myself because right. I had ideas in my head of doing more stuff. Finally, I was like, you know, I want to build something on the street that'd be fun. I think I was watching a little too much Street Outlaws and hanging around with some, <laughs> some street cars, and I was like, you know what? I got to make something here. Well, a friend of mine, Glenn Diedrich, he had a shop like right next to me, and he's like, well, let me build you a chassis. What I realized is he had a racing background, worked for Richard Petty. Oh wow! Um, dirt track stock car, just a good racing background, yeah. and he's a good fabricator. He comes from a second generation Camaro geometry front end, yeah. not what he raced back in the day. Yeah, bitchin'. So the platform of this truck's a full custom chassis. It's a chassis little stock car chassis, basically, <laughs> and it's all adjustable front and back, and I said I just want to put my C10 body on it, and I'll take it from there. It actually worked out really good. From the day we said yes, and I gave him a deposit, it was 12 days and it was delivered in my shop. Come on. Yeah, because he's just so used to it. So he whipped it out for me. It was really good price, yada, yada. But it worked. So I just took it from there. I put my Chevy body on it, built a cage. Yeah. And I got back with my people from off-road. Motor, exhaust, stuff like that, wiring. You know, these people that have been doing off-road with me for years. Yeah. Helped me finish the truck. And so there's a lot of uh, off-road details in it. Your off-road background is all over this thing. Some of it was just because I don't know any better. You know, <laughs> hanging out at Curla Duke Swap Meet for, you know, years and years and years. I'd get a bunch of different ideas and off-road expos and stuff like that. But a friend of mine owns Turnkey, Colby. He built me this all aluminum 6.2 LS3, Holly EFI on it big cam in it. Another guy, always done all my exhaust for like 13 years is uh, Richard Performance Exhaust and Vista, RPM. But he's all a lot off-road, you know? So I yeah. bring that off-road into it a little bit. CBR radiators and cooling systems, they're all off-road. So what do you I make power-wise? I'm just curious with the LS. Puts out just under 600 horse. Yeah. Truck weighs 3,066 pounds with gas in it. Wow. So the power to weight ratio is, makes it really fun to drive. And, um, power to weight's killer. You know, right any now. more power than that, it starts to get tough to get it to the ground. I couldn't so agree more. So it works really well. Yep. It's such a friggin' clean engine bay here, dude. I mean, obviously no inner fenders, the flattened out firewall. Did you do the firewall yeah, yourself? Yeah. You did. I just wanted it clean. You know, when you look at that stock, it just was beat looking. Oh <laughs> yeah, know? no, that's... So I cut it out and filled it and just tried to make it look smooth. Yeah. You know, this was the first one I've ever done. So obviously I was learning as I go. I basically had a good platform chassis to work off of. And uh, it's got a uh, 4L60 with about everything you can possibly do to it. And it's just a light truck. You know, yeah. Really light. Fun. What do you run? Like. What's the rear end on this? It's got a Winters 9 inch, 383 Moser, third member in it with gears, Will Woods around it. Like I said, the, the chassis builder, he was so used to building everything as light as he could for yeah, his racing career. Yeah, you can see where it's cut out everywhere, where, pot, where it's not going to be too structural. You, you like It's light, light, light it's it. light, but it's strong enough. And it was all built on, you know, his uh, CNC. You know, he's just got a lot of experience in that front end geometry. Whose A-arms are those? Those are, he built those. He did? Yeah, he built those. <laughs> it's got front sway bar, built the, built the lowers. It's all like speedway front end, all adjustable camber, caster, dirt track ball joint. It's got a house steering link on it. So it's just simple, but works good. Yeah. It's all adjustable, easy to fine tune. I can, I can even see the, the, front, the front wheels are cambered a bit. Mm -hmm. I'll bet this thing handles great. QA1 huh? shock shell, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, this is really I mean, bitching. I, I love the simplicity. Can, I mean, you can hold on as tight as you want. It'll run a street bike down, you know, in the corners. It, <laughs> it sticks hard. You were saying Willwood all around. I'm guessing it's a manual brake setup? Mm -hmm. Nice. 
People go back and forth on that one. I, I've, I'm not mechanical at all, dude, but I, but I did learn from the Willwood guys that when you valve everything correctly, manual hits almost as hard as a powered brake yeah. does, yeah. just that you have obviously more touch. Right. But I've also been in cars that were manual where you're like, God damn, I'm putting my foot down and I ain't getting any real yeah, stopping that's, here. That's, you know, you get a little bit of combination of that. You can fine tune it to where it works yeah. good. This is a 1973, you know, no smog. Yep. California plate. Yeah. It's got no mirrors on it. You know, I mean, it's 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 a half street truck, yeah. race truck, out to dinner, yeah, and yeah, I wanted yeah. that combination. So uh, it works pretty good. And I love that I can see you caged it all the way through, didn't you? Yeah, uh, Muncie Speed, they make all carbon fiber stuff for this truck. They had this and I thought, you know what? That just, that just goes a long way. It's not only is this yanking the air out of the motor, but it looks good. Totally you know, they just pop really right in. Those look really great, dude. They do look good. What's the color of the truck? Like I said, I'm a huge off-road guy. Yeah. But I'm really a big Toyota guy. That's Toyota Gray from the factory. Got it. <laughs> good friend of mine, Tom, painted a couple of vehicles of mine, and he's a yeah. good painter, and that's what he does. So you're smart enough to stay away, even though you're a painting contractor, you no, stay away from it on vehicles. No, I do houses commercial work. I, I don't, yeah, I don't get involved in this. No, that's, that's, that's going deep if you're gonna do that. I mean, it really is. What are, what are the wheels These and are sizes, 18 you know? inch US mags. They come with a uh, chrome lip and then a black center that is milled out, which I like, but I just didn't like the chrome. And yeah. so I had the lip painted black. So all you see is the mill now. Such a good choice. And it kind of, you know, gives it a one off because US Mags, they got these wheels everywhere. I just wanted something a little bit different. So I yeah. did something different with it. No, it looks great. I think it would, personal opinion, I think it would have been too much chrome down. Neato yeah. tires. These tires are like half gummy, half street a little bit you know yeah, they yeah. they work really well do you know the tire size uh, it's on? like 245 in the front and i think it's like a 305 in the back eights in the front tens in the rear and they work pretty good i really like the setup of this and obviously we've been seeing square bodies coming on hard right like yeah, square yeah. bodies oh, one yeah. of the hot things and this is really bitching it's it's you can tell your off-road guy now stepping over into this world with respect to the hot rod world, you still brought a lot of your elements I, of that. I hate doing what everybody's got. So yeah. I'm trying to do something different in a saturated market, bringing the off-road touch into it worked out good because they went to Dino's last year, went to the top 100, and then like pretty much stole the whole show of their 5,200 trucks. Now, you can see every color combination, every motor combination, every interior color. You can see whatever you're looking for, it's there at that show. No doubt it's, about it, dude. So yep, yep. by doing like the interior, off-road interior like I did, exhaust shooting out the back, it made it stick out. I mean, bro, out of 5,200 trucks to make top 100, yeah. dude, that like really... I think it went to top two. Really? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just having a good time, a hobby, yeah. you know, yeah. like to do what comes through my head. I mean, this is so very off-road. Off you know, I do this practically on all my off-road trucks. And this is from my exhaust guy who does all 6100 trucks, trophy trucks. He yeah. does a lot of off-road, CBR cooler. So I'm still sticking with that structurally designed rear end and tried to mate the two together. This chassis is so bitchin'. It works pretty good and it's fun. I cleaned up the bed. Glenn Diedrich, this was just like something that he whipped up for me. He didn't even do these C10s. He, he just something that he whipped up for me. Now he's been doing them and he's come a long ways and he's doing some really crazy stuff. So he's made a lot of changes, but I'm super pleased with it. Have fun. Dude, I love this exhaust coming out here. It's it's. It pretty much steals the show every time. <laughs> well, because let's be honest, I mean, mostly what we're going to see is either a side exit, which I personally love, or dumping out the rear. Maybe you get lazy and you drop it in front of the rear end. That's boring. I just like seeing, like you said, something unique. It makes a statement. It's I mean, it's funny. You're a hobbyist, bro, because this is bitching, man. This it is turned so out. Cool. It turned out cool. It, it's definitely all around power to weight. You know, it shows well. Yeah. It runs good, works good, it's comfortable. It's got power windows, it's got air conditioning. I mean, it's about as comfortable as you can get in a race truck. Yeah. So I'm assuming the fuel door over there is just for looks now, because this is your fuel yeah. cell, yeah. right? Yeah. Plus you get some weight back here, which yeah. you need. Yeah, it's about a 28 gallon fuel cell. So it's a little big for a, a C10, but yeah. you know, if you want to get on a freeway and go to Arizona or something, you can you do it. This four link setup, it's tough to get down in here and look, but you'll see it's all adjustable. There's holes all in the mount. I had it set up with one hole higher than that, and right when the truck was done, I just didn't quite have it fine-tuned. 
the chassis builder friend of mine, Glenn, he's like, just drop it. I think he dropped it one link, one hole down, and it puts so much bite on the rear end that like, it just hooks so good. And you did say this is a locker rear, right? Yeah, it works good. It's a full floater. I love the choice for you guys to keep to it open. Keep, yes, I, I yes. did that on my new one just yes. because it's, you got something to look at. I you agree. Know, you want to see all that stuff. And you ain't ever using it as a pickup truck anyway, so what Negative. the hell? Come on. I, you know what I mean? What about all the bed panels? Is this stuff you made or is it... Yeah, I just made it. Really? You know? <laughs> These are like off-road panels that I make on my off-road truck. <laughs> and I basically just cleaned it all up. I widened these wheel wells and, you know, drilled and dimple dyed the insides just to kind of give it a little something. Wow, this is slick. The, so that's another, I mean, that's so friggin' off-road. The center console, the screen. I, the I walked into this wanting a trophy truck look. That's a trophy truck dash and made a console. I mean, all this is off-road, basically. Did yeah, you um, made that? Yeah. Oh, uh, and these seats are ridiculously comfortable. Yeah, they're the XLs. Brian, you got a bitchin' truck, dude. And then this right here, it's all Autometer LC that runs the truck. How so slick it's is simple. that, huh, dude? It's got, you know, hidden air conditioning. A little vent down here on the side. One over here. Oh, yeah. Blows cold air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heater. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I see your vintage air yeah. controllers. Cup I swear holder. to God, I pointed out every time I see somebody that didn't put a cup holder in, it's like, bro, yeah. you're gonna want a cup holder. I was like, should I put two or should I just do one? This is slick, dude. This is so slick. All the wiring's really organized right underneath that lid right there in that console. So it's easy access, all the fuses, all the everything is just right there. Is it really? Yeah. Is it a <laughs> manual do, or is it a... No, you can hot rod it around town. If you're on like Highway 74, I mean, you can run it, higher RPMs and run it and downshift it. Yeah. Or you can just put it in drive and drive it. Yeah. I was just curious. I see a lot of them where it's a manual valve body, you know, with this, when I, especially when you I know, see this type of. I got my daughter wanted to drive, my wife wanted to drive it. I mean, I wanted it easy to drive. Dude, I hear you. You know? And your cage is, you did the cage yourself, huh? Yeah, it's 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 not bad. It's strong. Yeah. And I played it all the front and back, so it just makes it really sturdy. Yeah. But then I put clamps underneath the cab at the cage, so you can pull the cab off still, off the chassis if you want to. Yeah, I love how much thought you've put into this, man. Is that just replacement stock door panels? Yeah, LMC. And then I had the dash wrap just to kind of like tie it in. The seats came with like yellow Momo logos. So I tied in the yellow stitch. Yeah. Well, I think we've covered the bulk of what there is. Uh... That's about it. I yeah. mean, it's pretty simple. Yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> you know? Every time somebody tells me something simple, I've learned that from their perspective, the simple stuff is actually oftentimes the most time consuming, yeah. most painful, most difficult. Been there. A lot of these projects that are doing everything so electronic and a this and a that and a button for everything. And a, you know, Dude. this is a very simple, yeah. easy to work on, easy to get to truck. Yeah, I get you, man. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll put cameras in. You guys, we're gonna introduce you to Brian in just a second here. Brian's the owner of the truck and we're gonna go for a drive. This thing's, dude, this thing is so bitchin'. I mean, two seconds behind the wheel, you're like, okay, I just wanna go drive. Like, I wanna go drive. Yeah, you could like chill on it, 1,000 RPMs, you know, fourth gear. I just wanna step on it everywhere. I'll bet Me you personally. do. And it is that kind of horsepower range where you can do that, because yeah. it's, yeah, it's funny, and I know a lot of you guys want to give me trouble about this, but I'm not the, I'm just not the thousand horsepower guy. Yeah. I, I, I think it's bitching to talk about. It does great burnouts and stuff, but I like stuff like this where a 600 horsepower, you can yeah. put that to the ground. Yeah, it's You can actually put it down. It's manageable for me, especially being like newer to these style trucks. You know, like I've, I've driven off-road trucks with, you know, my best friend's father my whole life and stuff too, like, but getting behind something like this was a whole new experience, you know? And like, as soon as I started it, and as soon as I felt that cam, and I was like, I I'm done, I I'm sold. <laughs> I a new lifestyle for me, like, here we go. Sell everything else and let's just start making these, yeah. you know? By so. the way, you guys, I didn't actually make the intro that this is Brian, Brian's the owner of the truck. We were talking off camera, because I'm always curious with people that, you know, what the hell do you do for a living? You, yeah. You've got this, you're not a builder, so obviously you do something that affords you this. 
tell people that are watching what, what your business is, what you do. I own and operate a uh, custom silk screen printing manufacturing company out in Los Angeles. Uh, we do custom screen printing, embroidery, we do full package domestic programs. Uh, we work with luxury brands and sustainability brands here in local in Los Angeles, you know. That's my bread and butter, Yeah. you know what I mean? But yeah. I want to start tallying around with, you know, with cars. I just noticed, is there no turn signals? No turn signals, it's all by hand. You know, <laughs> just no brakes, so it's, it's right and left. You know, if, if there's a cop there, that's what it'll be. Yeah, I get, it's old enough, you're allowed to do that, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. God, you ain't kidding, man. You can you can tell that this thing. Yeah, it's real snappy back and forth. It really is, man. It's but I like that it's not darty either. Like I noticed, you you do have to turn a bit to get it turning. Yeah. You know. Hey, you definitely have to have your intention to go that way. Yeah. But it reacts quick. Yeah, it does definitely. Like one of my business partners, he's got a he's got a Porsche like GS whatever. First time I got in, and he scared the shit out of me driving it. But he was like, "Bro, anybody can drive this car." Because I was like, "Good, dude," because I really don't trust you right now. But this car is badass and it's handling. <laughs> you know, like after a couple of minutes, I went from being like, "Oh shit," to like, "Enjoy the ride." You know, smile. It reminds me of that, like, just how responsive it is, especially when like I'm trying to jam it over. You know, like no cars are around. I like to get up early in the morning. I'm I'm up early, like at 4 a.m. Every morning. Wow, dude, you're really early morning. Yeah, my, my company starts at 5.30 a.m. every morning, you know? Got it. Presses are running, everything's going, dryers going, employees are there, full force, you know? Got so it. Typically, like, for, you know, 15 years straight, I was there, you know, 5 a.m., getting everything started, getting all the, the, the dryers primed, and the equipment's going, and pallets hot, and so on and so forth. So I'm just used to it, you know? And yeah. That's when I like to go out and just... Yeah. Kind of just piss off the neighbors when we start it up and just pull it out, but, you know? By the way, I can tell you what, dude. I love the way he's got this program where the shift points happen. You can keep it low, you can put your foot into it, make it go, you know, higher RPMs. Yeah. I like cruising this thing too. Like, I'll, this thing, I'm cruising at 2,000 RPMs, you know, dropping down to like 1,000, you know? I could drive it like that or I could really step on it and yeah. get it going. You yeah. Know? I mean, I'm noticing like miles. You've got miles on this already. You got 2,500? Yeah, I don't think it's twi quite 2,500 because when he did install this, um, something about like it was just tacking like double the mileage. I think it was like the first 500. So we're at about like 2,000 in between him and myself. I've definitely put myself about like 1,500 miles on this thing. Gotcha. I'm driving it up and down the coast. I'm going to Donut Derelicts, Cars and Coffee. You know, I went down and met you guys at the uh, yeah, at the quarantine at the run, cruise. Yeah, the yeah. quarantine yeah. cruise. Like, it's the idea of it, man. I, I I always trip on people that build these really cool vehicles and then you know you see it. It's been around for three years. You look at the odometer, you're like, dude, your car's got 300 miles on it. Like, yeah. you, you do you do 50 miles a year on it? I mean, come on. to drive, dude. That's like, right. Dude, granted, people do have to, like, tow their shit to shows, whatever. You know what I mean? But, like, I don't want to build something I'm not going to drive. Yeah. I know I can hop in this thing right now and drive to Frisco, no problem. Yep. Matter of fact, I might be able to do it on one tank. He's got that 25, right. 25, 25, 25, 28, gallon, whatever. It's like 28 gallons, 25. I don't think I've ever filled it up all the way, but... I know for sure I've driven from San Clemente to the desert, Palm Springs, back to uh, San Clemente, then back to Palm Springs on a full tank. Still had a little bit to spare. These LSs, and I know a lot of you guys are all crazy about LSs. Oh, why another LS? Because they're great. Yeah. You can make this kind of power and, and still, when you're mild on throttle input, get 20 plus miles to the gallon. Yeah. I guess because I'm not a mechanic, I, I just like stuff that, like this, you get in it, you flip your switches on, you go drive it down the road, and you have fun, and you don't have to think about it, you know? So how long you had your business for? In August of 2009 is when we opened up the printing facility, luckily in Los Angeles. Yeah. It was a lot of work, dude, you know, like we met great manufacturing companies through it. We were doing domestic full package, we were doing a lot of the printing in the, in the get-go, and then obviously that you know, gradually adapted other things. We mill fabric, we cut fabric, we sew fabric, we dye fabric. Mainly, I wanted to create a service in a, in a down economy in 2008. And I was like, there's nowhere to go up but up right now. Like, I'm, ballsy move, dude, for yeah, the timing of it. I'm 40, right? I'm 40 years old. I was, I was like, you know, 26 at the time, you know? And I was like, screw it, let's go. I'm a creative myself, you know? Yep. Illustrated man, I 
they've had sleeves tattooed twice, you know, cover-ups, you know, like full cover-ups. That's my outlet, you know? I love it. I wouldn't change it for anything else. It's what lets me provide for my family and, you know, lets yeah. me, you know, get into things like this and yeah. have some freedom just to, like, put my, my foot to the floor, you know? It's funny. People don't, people see you succeed. They, they, miss, out, they miss out on the part where, like you said, you lived in your warehouse. Wow. So did I. First six months blood, of my sweat, business. Blood, sweat, and tears, dude. Calling your best friend to borrow five grand just to get you through the month. Like I said, I got solid friends. I got yep. a solid family, a solid support team, so. This truck, by the way, I know we're yakking about other stuff, but yeah. I, it just hit me, like, again, slightly getting into it and coming from like behind them, lane changes, moving across. Yeah. I mean, this thing's so sick, bro. Yeah. What a, dude, I've driven just on the channel alone over 500 vehicles. Cause I, yeah. you know, I drive most of the stuff we ever shoot. So this is one of the coolest trucks, cars, vehicles. This is one of the coolest customs I've ever driven. This thing's sick. Thanks, man. Yeah, everything has been great responses on this thing, dude. I've been stoked to hear all the response, especially when I take it places, you know, and me not coming from, you know, a car building, fabricating, you know, yeah, background. Yeah, you know? yeah. Just to be like, oh shit, did I kind of like make the right investment? Like, am I, and I, I know, I know Chappie's a solid guy, so I know I'm like with sure. the right team, you know what sure, I mean? But sure. at the same time, I'm like, is this going to work? You know, and then you get to that show and they're just like, oh, you're going to get this 100%. This ain't so sick, you know, so I mean, dude, so for this thing to make, I've never been to Dino's, but I've seen images of it, videos yeah. of it. I know how massive it is, thousands and thousands of trucks. Mm -hmm. For this thing to make up to, what did he say? Top two, he top thought two. it made? Top two. Out of he's got five thousand he, trucks, he's got the trophy. I think it was like fifty-two hundred or something like that. Yeah, but I mean, he's got the trophies for it, dude. I, actually, I want to go snag those from him. You like, should. Mine. That <laughs> should go with this truck, <laughs> yeah, bro. That, what are you What are you doing with them there? I could feel it putting the power down. Yeah. Like you got that slight little chirp going into second, a little kick, but this thing's bitching, dude. It's funny. Now I know what your speed was there. <laughs> Hey, it got up to 65 miles an hour quickly, man. I can tell if you stayed in it too, it's gonna just keep coming on, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah. Dude, this thing's so bitching, man. <laughs> Scott, you built a hell of a truck, dude, or Chappie, everyone yeah. calls you, I know. Scotty Chaplin. Hell of a truck, dude. drive it in a hot, hot day, anything. This thing's sick, bro. At first I was like concerned, cause like I said, I'm not a car guy, and I'm like, hey, is this thing supposed to be running hotter than that? Like, I remember my, my, my other C10, I ran like 210 or something like that, like. Yeah, no, this thing's thoroughly impressive, dude. It really is. I mean, especially of... feeling it, the way it's grabbing the ground when you're standing on it. I mean, you can really, from the passenger seat, I can feel it squatting and grabbing, yeah. you know? And, that's what you want it to do, right? Yeah, it doesn't want to it doesn't want to break loose, you know what I mean? No. Bro, 
That was badass. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> well, you said burn out. Whatever. I'm fucking burn out. And then you could just cruise it, you know? Yep. Now, this 11, 1100 well RPMs, you know, 1500 RPMs, just yep. cruising. The off road guys, they have to deal with so many. They know how to beat shit up. That's the thing. And since they're beating it on it and they don't want to be broken down in the middle of the fucking desert somewhere, they, they build shit that can take a beating from all the cooling systems. Strong, easy access. Yeah, cooling systems, overload. Like this, yeah. quick access to pull this whole panel and Got get everything, everything right under there. here. In my opinion, the off-road guys and the drag racers are building the smartest, most bulletproof shit because they go out and beat on it. Yeah. Beat on it. That is such a sick build, man. I love all the off-road elements brought into it. I'm still a little stunned that with that small of a back tire, how much that thing hooks. I mean, the chassis suspension, that's just a proper build right there, you guys. That's a proper build built to go drive hard. Yeah, not massive power, 600, but it's just a built to drive truck. And that is my favorite of all vehicles, man, is ones that are built to go have fun in. Truly stoked about this one. Scott, thanks for uh, coming out with Brian. Brian, thanks for taking the time to shoot with us. And thanks to you guys for hanging and watching what we do here. I really appreciate it, man, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, you guys, later.